everyone, welcome to Simple Hobby Homesteading. Today we are going to make apple crisp. This is one of the most favorite desserts in our house and so let's just get right to it. I use Granny Smith apples. It's a really good apple for uh, baking, for crisps. It's a tart apple so it works really, really well. Now we have different options on how we can cut apples. You can just do the old school peeling with a knife. This is, I think, my grandmother's favorite way to peel an apple is with a knife and just go around and peel um, all the peelings with a knife. Or you can peel with a carrot peeler or vegetable peeler, whatever you call that. And that's usually the way I do it if I don't want to get out my apple peeler. So here's a really cool little tool that I don't know if you folks know about, but this is called an apple peeler and it is the mother of all inventions in the kitchen. You simply put this back, you gotta be really careful though because this part here is really sharp and this part is really sharp. So you put your apple in like this on the three skewers and you can order these online pretty much anywhere, but then you just crank the handle like this and it goes ahead and it peels the apple for you and it slices it into rings. So I'm gonna show you why that's really, really awesome here in a second. So once you finish with this apple, and see it took me two seconds, and I don't have juice covering my hands or anything from peeling. And so you get to have an apple that has these rings. See how it's got all the rings like that? And let me show you what you do next, which is so handy. Once you have your apples sliced into rings like this from your apple slicer, you just take and you slice right down the middle like that and you have all these slices that are ready to go right in the the pan so we're going to put them there for now because i'm going to show you some different ways that you can do it too when you're putting these in you just kind of check to make sure that there's no core or seeds left in here all right so this one was done earlier now, if you're gonna be a little bit before you're making your apple crisp, you do want to put a little bit of lemon juice on top of these apple slices so that they don't turn brown. You can just squeeze a lemon or two on top of the slices once you get them in your pan. Now, another option is if you don't have an apple slicer or you don't wanna get an apple slicer, you peel your apple and then you just cut it in half like that and you simply cut out the middle like this. You're gonna cut out the core be careful not to cut yourself on that. And then you're going to cut this into slices. So we're just going to simply cut these into slices, like this thin slices. The thicker the apple, the more crunchy it will be in your apple crisp. And we want these to cook down nice and soft. So try to get them a uniform thickness as you, if you can. to use an 8x8 eight eight pan and you can either get one of the foil ones if you want or a Pyrex like this works well and you are going to line the bottom with your apples and I usually do about four apples three or four apples depending on the size and we're just getting these all on the bottom here Once you have your apples in here, and this takes about three apples to fill up a, a pan this size, you are going to want to mix your crumble on top together. So first we need one cup of oats, and these are just the, the plain old fashioned oats. Do not get the uh, quick cook oats, those don't work as well. You can do steel cut oats. We do need one third cup of melted butter. Now just for you, you new cooks, the Sides of butter have tablespoon markings. You can see these tablespoon markings. And five and one third tablespoons is a third of a cup of butter. So we're going to go ahead and pour that in. And we need something to stir with, I forgot. All right, so we're gonna pour that in and scrape the butter in. And then we need one third cup of flour. We're gonna give that a quick stir. 
And there we go, those oats. One third cup of flour. And I like to keep my flour in big Pyrex containers like this. It works so well. So we're gonna give that a quick little stir here. That butter in the flour. And then we need a half a cup of packed brown sugar, just light brown sugar. If you want to use a higher molasses content, you can use dark brown sugar. But we need one half cup pa packed brown sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And that all goes in there like that. And we're mixing that all up as well. So we're just gonna mix this until it's all well mixed. You can't over mix this, which is another reason why I love this recipe. Can't over mix it. But you're gonna just do it until you get crumbles. Make sure all that brown sugar is uh, mashed up and not in big clumps itself. Woo, the brown sugar was flying. All right, so we're gonna get this all stirred up like that. And then we simply pour this on top of our apples. And if you're gonna be a little while before you put the crumble on top, you can sprinkle those apples with lemon, like I said. Just cut a lemon in half, or use your lemon juice in the fridge and sprinkle some lemon on top of there. And if you wanna make a little bit of extra crumble and cut up a few extra apples, you can make these little carafes like this with the apples in them and put a little bit of the crumble on top of those. I think we've got a little bit of extra crumble here. Yeah, I didn't make any extra, but we can, we can put a little bit there. So you just make sure all your apples are covered, just like that. And then we are gonna put this in a preheated 375 degree oven for 30 minutes. We are gonna cover it with foil. The last 10 minutes or so, we're gonna take the foil off and let this top get nice and crusty. So we'll see you in just a minute. One handy thing I've learned over the years is that I go to the same cookbooks for the same recipes over and over again, and that's great, that's wonderful, but I also love that I made my own cookbook, and what I did is I just grabbed a binder, and then I put page protectors in there with my favorite recipes, the ones that I, I have used over and over again that are tried and true. Either I, I uh, make a copy of them out of the cookbook, I print them off the internet, or I write them down on my own paper and put them in here. But this is the book, this is like my cookbook that will be passed on and on and on in generations because it's, it's the recipes that I love, the recipes that I made, the recipes that I copied, the recipes that I got from other places, but the ones that we made often in this home or loved in this home. And so it's a, just a really simple, easy way to do a cookbook for yourself and it's really handy to have. So congratulations, you did it. 30 minutes in the oven at 375 and you have a finished apple crisp that is ready to eat. Just spoon that up and have a really great dessert tonight. You can throw some ice cream with it, whatever you want. Some modifications or some adjustments that you might want to make uh, is adding nuts. You can add pecans or walnuts if you like, or adding cranberries, or adding a little orange zest, or even adding a little bit of vanilla when you do the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients together. So play with that all you want and have a really good time with it and have a wonderful fall. See you later.